Okay, well, we installed the LED lights in the Wolverine and they look amazing. And what I wanted to do, the goal with this machine, was to install LED halos, blue ones. So I bought a set, and I can't even remember the uh, I can't even remember the price, but let's say 20 bucks for two of them. You can see I've got three because I actually installed the first set, and they lasted all about. Uh, the first one didn't even last a minute. And the second one gave me about two minutes time, then it burned out. And then they, I contacted the manufacturer, and they sent me a new set, and they last about five minutes, and they burn out. And, it's, and I've got it wired right to the battery. I even have a fuse in the line, which they say you don't even need. But it's these little things that are actually burning out. And I cracked one open, and it's really poorly made. So I went up in price, and I can't remember what the price of these were, but again, it's an Amazon. I'll put a link in the, in the description here. But it's a little different setup. It's a different style of light where you can see right away the difference. There's little LEDs in this. I believe one's called plasma and one's called LED. But look at the igniter on these. A lot different. So... It actually, I wouldn't say it looks more quality, but it might be. You know what, if they work, it would be well worth it. So what I've got is I've got a switch. So I've got my power running the battery to this switch here. And it's an illuminated switch, which I'm going to miss. But it, it works my light bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same switch position, but I bought a three-way switch, so I've got... Light bar power off, and then I'll have the LED power. I bought another one of these trigger toggles, which I really like. This one here is for the winch. The red looks really good on, on Betty Davis, and it, uh, it covers the switch up so you can't, can't accidentally hit it. Let's get right to this right now. We don't have a lot of time. So take a tumble on you, roll you like you would die. Till you come out blue, yeah. She's got Betty Davis eyes. Yeah. Have to loosen the, the headlight where they mount. I just want to get it so it swivels a bit. I was so disheartened that, that after sending a second set of halos that they they still didn't work. But you know, you, like I said, you see a lot of guys running them and. They claim they have no issues. There's a little set screw. Hopefully you can see it right here. This screw here holds the, the plastic shield on. Very easy to take apart. That shield and the bulb will come out like that. And then you'll see there's another. There's the, the adjustment screw here, which actually sells. That's how you set the tilt of the headlight. If you're taking this off, just be careful you don't lose a little plastic nut right here at the back. Pull the screw out and again, don't lose the spring. I'm gonna put that back together, just the way they came off. It still won't come out of that housing, so we're gonna undo these screws here. And on the back of these screws is a little flat piece of metal that's actually threaded. That's kind of your nut googly eye bulbs like this they weren't built into a bumper which I like this I see a lot of guys remove them totally and put a square LED on and I don't think they look as good yeah, that that grill will pull off these LED halo rings are 110 millimeters you can see there they fit perfectly around the bulb like that now I see these have little clips which we're gonna have to cut off but they also fit right in the housing like this. So I was originally going to glue them. I was originally going to glue them to the headlight, but I'm thinking of zip tying these to this mesh. That way they're out front and center. And they're not pressing against the headlight and I don't have any 
obnoxious glue to remove if these things are junk and they don't work. The last time I put them on I used 3M Automotive adhesive and it sticks good to the light. But, again, I think this is going to work just fine. I don't think these are going to see much action anyway, right? Keep this in the housing if we can, so it stays out of the water. So we're going to look and we're going to find the wires for the headlights, which I believe this is a power wire. We'll turn the switch on and then we're just going to stick this in here and see if she lights up and it does. So that way we know that that's the power wire. So we're just going to strip more off the power here. With uh, ATVs and motorcycles, solder and heat shrink is by far the most foolproof way to put this stuff together. Apparently there's no there's no polarity on these things, so for our intents and purposes, we're going to call red the power, white we're going to call ground. I have some extra wire from a trailer harness that I'm going to use. Well, I know it's 12 volt and uh, it'll work just fine. If I hold that, I should be able to flick it on and we should have power there, so that's good. Put a big fat heat shrink on there and it should be nice. So we're going to pop this off as well. But it, it just snaps in and off. You can see here my wiring. So the center is the pa power ground. It's labeled on the switch there. I should have power if I test, touch the test light to the yellow wire. This should light up. The switch is off. There it's on. So that's the power to the battery. This one is switched. So I'm going to tap into this one with the uh, with my cigarette lighter charger that I'm putting on the bike. I just wanted to get a feel of where we're, what we're dealing with here before we get too far down the proverbial rabbit hole. Get some paste so it helps with the solder suck into that joint. Love electrical. It's one thing I think my dad taught me that has saved me a ton of money over the years. Heat from the bottom if you can. It's way more difficult when you have a pile of wire like this. So when you get a fitting you're happy with, the solder's good, you just slide the, the shrink tube over the joint. Well, she's good and sealed and waterproof. And it hides your ugly botchery of a solder job. <laughs> Run this yellow wire through. Put it on the red here. There, that's a nice solder job there. I use a green wire for a crown wire. That is a good color for a ground wire, actually. Uh, the soldering paste bubble at the end, that's sometimes a good indication that you've got a good shrink on there. There, that's ready to roll. Hook our ground up, hook our power back up to test it. Yeah, see, so you can see those. That looks like shit. So I got some little zip ties, it'll be much better. Two. Do that. That's perfect. Always gonna have a neighbor cutting the grass when you're trying to make videos. Just through like that. These don't get tightened down, torqued down, they just get snugged. 
so you still have some adjustment. You'll see there's a little clip here. It, it goes in first, and we'll put the last set screw back in. Okay. Oh, we'll tighten it right now. We'll test it out. good. Third burst, same as the first. This one's a little trickier to get at. And we know what we're dealing with now. This one here should be a lot faster. <laughs> Red's my power. Perfect. We're going to ground this system. It's right there. We're going to connect the green wire into that loop there. All right. So I'm just taking the old switch off. This is the power cord to the LED, the light bar. So we should have uh, we should have light bar. but it looks good like that. This is just one of those Dollarama bullets. It'll go in there and that'll be my charger. All the boys think she's a spy. She got better day this eyes. Well, I'll let you know if those things last longer than the last ones.